uh, to introduce myself, my name is Ubosh and yes, uh, I work as a software engineer for about 13 years. I spent first year, first eight years of my career as a software engineer in test. And uh, this year I found that in translation means packing sets. So to have as much um, Bitcoin as possible every month, just thinking. Um, and we help people with automation of their trading strategies. So buying, selling uh, Bitcoin and uh, other crypto. Um, I went already through many of uh, companies, but I'd like to highlight, highlight these uh, just two. Uh, the last one I was working for, General Bytes, it's a Czech manufacturer of uh, cryptocurrency ATMs, so machines where you can buy or sell Bitcoin and other crypto. But I found Bitcoin already in 2013 when I was working for Barclays Investment Bank. And we were testing software for uh, trading uh, of stocks of cash equities on uh, huge uh, exchanges like Nazim, NASDAQ, London Stock Exchange, and uh, others. But we were, uh, as employees, restricted in trading stocks. So I discovered uh, Bitcoin at the time. And um, I was fa fascinating, fascinated when uh, I actually looked that on, on the data where you can just open their trade view on some exchange and see everything what's happening there. So just a quick introduction how actually exchanges work. It's not that many people are familiar with it. So uh, this is an example of a Bitcoin to US dollars. And basically you have uh, supply and demand. There are people willing to buy Bitcoin uh, at some price or lower price. There are people willing to sell their Bitcoin on some price or a higher price. And when that supply and demand meets, um, people can trade that and that makes actually a price of an asset, right? Uh, on the left side, you see last trades. On the graph, you see the history. Um, so uh, there are two types of orders, uh, how you can um, uh, trade. So first, there's a limit order, which, as I said, you can uh, put your order, that order book, at some specific price, and it just waits there. Yeah. But then uh, somebody needs to actually come with a market order, which means he says, I want to buy or sell right now, whatever the price is. So this way it actually eats up the liquidity from, from the order book and it gets executed immediately. And that can have actually effect on the price because uh, when I come back, you see there are some uh, quantities available to buy or sell. And if somebody comes with a huge market order, I want to buy so much, that she shifts the price because you run out of people willing to buy or sell at some price and you go either higher or lower. Um, and just so quickly, there's specifically there are two types of uh, exchanges. First, real, real exchange, which I just described. So that's a real marketplace that own order book and the users trade against themselves, right? Um, and the exchange just takes a small fee from every trade. Uh, there are some examples with uh, Coinmate.io being the only Czech exchange where you can also trade in Czech grounds. And there are brokerages, which doesn't actually have own order book, but uh, they uh, actually use themselves some exchange uh, at, the at the back end. They provide some other service to use their, like, for example, trading different currency. And so on. So usually brokerages are a bit slower and have higher fees. Uh, this is the service which I discovered we are developing uh, right now and are a couple of months already in production with about uh, 2000 users already. And what we provide is a nice UI uh, to the user with uh, some statistics and charts, how their investments are going, and they can automate some buying or selling strategies and keeping everything um, on track like uh, you, you, you see how the instant goes 
how it works is that uh, people are not actually sending money to us. We are just some uh, kind of extension above the exchange. Uh, so people still send money to that exchange and uh, just give them permission over the API keys to allow execute the trades um, based on their strategy, which they uh, set on our, uh, our website. And then again, once they, for example, buy some Bitcoin, only they can transfer it to their own wallet when we don't have permission for that. Uh, so uh, first step, when uh, people come to the website, they need to connect it with their exchange, right? So we show them tutorial how to do it and basically create the uh, API keys, copy it here, and that gives us the permissions to read the balance and trade and not to withdraw uh, funds. And this uh, all is about uh, challenges, challenges we face. So the first challenge is uh, we need to test this connection, right? That uh, we have just those permissions, so we don't find out then later when we want to actually execute the trade that it, it doesn't work. Uh, some exchanges provide this information, some API, some don't. So we have to, for example, test it uh, to be try to execute a trade with a zero dollar value, and based on the error returned, we can either tell that either you, we have the permission, but it doesn't work, or we don't. Um, and of course, there's a huge uh, security risk, so we are really careful with um, basically dealing with those API keys, so it's encrypted in the database, we're not logging it anywhere, and so on. And also, the users are setting an IP address filter, so those keys can be used only from uh, our service, our server. Uh, and we also encourage people to set up two-factor authentication. So first, uh, the most basic uh, strategy, which I can encourage even to anyone if you want to get into crypto and into Bitcoin especially, uh, try that. It's called DCA, Dollar Cost Averaging Strategy. And it basically uh, means you will be buying by small amounts uh, in some um, given periods like every month or every week or even every day. And the goal is to not to try uh, timing the market, like finding when is the good time to buy, but really keep it uh, recurring and uh, automatic. Um, so you spread your investment to a longer of time. Uh, by doing this blue line there, it's a four year moving average. Like uh, average price, weighted average price over the four years. And currently we are under that, and historically there were great times to buy. So maybe take a look on Bitcoin, it's, it might be a good, good time. Uh, on our service, we also have this like, DCA calculator, which um, when on the historic uh, data you can try yourself with investing for how many years, um, with some frequency, and what amount you would uh, basically make uh, some, some more money. Um, second step on our website, uh, you create this regular DCA uh, purchasing. So you select the exchange you connected it, your currency pair, so for example, Bitcoin and buying with check rounds. Uh, you can set it uh, to, with some name or uh, also target if you want to save some money for something. Uh, you select this uh, frequency and strategy. And uh, as I was talking about the market and limit orders, the basic strategy using the market. And it just means whenever it's time, in this case, every week on Monday, we will buy it for 1,000 pounds. Uh, the second strategy using limit orders is quite uh, to, to make it more fun and also to try to make you more money. Uh, is you can actually use those limit orders and automatically recalculate them every uh, every time the, the DC runs, so for example every week. So you can buy it when uh, the price dips by certain amount of percentages. Yeah. So for example by 3% or 5% um, or more. Uh, so some challenges here, uh, it's about the regular execution and so this uh, recalculate uh, every time uh, cancel the orders, wait for the funds to be returned to your uh, account, 
then create another orders and so on. That's a big thing about uh, error handling. What happens with some exchanges down and need to repeat uh, some requests? Uh, we are running into uh, AP rate uh, limits. So uh, every exchange has some uh, limit how often we can send some requests. Uh, also, it's uh, about REST versus WebSockets or something like getting updated price. We can actually use uh, WebSockets. And so it gets pushed to us automatically. We don't have to uh, deal with these API rate limits. Um, and you challenge is about keeping track of the open orders as those are orders are there sitting waiting. We need to refresh them automatically and ideally as quickly as possible once the price reaches them. Um, so uh, with this uh, exchange Java library, so our backend is uh, in Java and uh, the Kind of a promise was that the idea was that you use that uh, core module in your code with some generic interfaces, like uh, get the balance or create the order, cancel the order, and so on. And there are some sub modules which you can plug and play uh, for individual exchanges. So hopefully, the adding support for a new exchange will be easy. The reality was uh, that uh, anyway, each exchange has many specifics. So uh, we need to find a way around a couple of issues and sometimes the library's interface are uh, just limiting to do some exchange specific stuff, right? Um, and when the API changes, you need to wait for the update to the library or uh, create a pull request yourself and wait for it to be merged and it comes in some snapshot dependency. Uh, and sometimes that's broken. It happened to us also. It just didn't work. It rolled back it. So in Indian, we are thinking about not using it. Um, let me skip this. Uh, about some pair, uh, currency pairs challenges. Uh, so currency pair is like, for example, BTC slash USD. So we are buying Bitcoin with US dollars. And uh, we need to be sure to not hard code. Uh, anything in the code directly because you can have many different pairs and you can even have a currency pairs uh, with uh, you are buying the Bitcoin, so different currency, you are buying it with um, Bitcoin. So in this example, for example, uh, Ether slash Bitcoin. Um, and also the exchanges can add or remove the support for some currency pairs uh, anytime. So. Uh, we need to also have a deal uh, with that. Uh, like I would say the biggest uh, challenge was to dynamically deal uh, with those currency pairs and their special, like um, calling met metadata. And uh, for every one of them, we need to know what's the current price scale, like how many decimal points are there in the price, how many decimal points are there in the base, so that the amount you are buying. Uh, how the currency is visualized in the UI, plus we need to somehow override it. Uh, for example, check around, we don't want to show the decimal basis, but without decimals. Uh, there are some minimum and maximum on either of the side of the currency pair. There are, there are some different uh, step sizes in which steps you can increase the quantity or the price. And <laughs> uh, the difficult, uh, the most difficult was that these can be actually different when you are buying or when you are selling and if you are using market order or limit order. Yes, so there is, for example, different uh, minimum or um, or the counter minimum based on those. So uh, we had to come up with a custom config uh, for this, uh, how to be deal with it. Um, uh, I was saying about the DCA about uh, buying. And uh, we are currently also implementing strategies also when you want to take profits, so selling the cryptocurrency back uh, to fiat. Uh, so uh, there are a couple of ways how to approach that. Uh, either you can have like a reverse DCA, so we are selling every week, for example, or when the price goes up, uh, you sell partially, or we can do also, uh, we will be able to do some portfolio rebalancing. So, you can keep your, for example, Bitcoin and, uh, and burn in 50-50 ratio, and as the price moves um, uh, individually uh, against themselves, you can trade those. Um, 
What was helpful for some exchanges, they actually provide a testnet or like sandbox environment, but usually they have limited functionality or degraded performance, so it's not really great. Um, and at the end, just how test automation helps us with, of course, many units tests because the, these calculations uh, are really critical. Uh, some API integration tests, CIC pipelines. Uh, we just started with the Cypress UI automation as well, and we have some checks for the current zippers, uh, main data. So when it gets updated on the exchange, we can, as soon as possible, change it on our side uh, as well. All right, uh, that's it. And if you have any questions about Bitcoin or automation of these strategies, uh, please feel free to talk to me after or in the evening. Thank you.